Okay, so here we're looking at a model showing the skull, the brain, and some of the important arteries that run up through the neck to supply various structures of the face and um, structures intracranially. If we look um, just at the lateral aspect of the neck, we see here the main artery that will essentially give rise to the branches that supply the entirety of the structures of the face, the skull and intracranial contents. So here is the common carotid artery and as you can probably appreciate the common carotid artery splits into two or bifurcates giving rise to a internal carotid artery and an external carotid artery. The external carotid artery um, gives branches within the neck to supply various structures of the face, um, the bones of the face and the, um, the scalp and the tissues of the scalp. The internal carotid artery, however, uh, runs right up the length of the neck and doesn't give any branches and instead will pass through a tiny hole at the base of the skull, um, which is very, very difficult to see, but essentially it will end through the base of the skull through what's called the carotid canal. The bifurcation of the common carotid artery into its two terminal branches is roughly at the level of the fourth cervical vertebrae and that also correlates roughly with the superior border of the thyroid cartilage which obviously we don't see on this particular model. At the point of the bifurcation, um, what we'd ordinarily see is a slight swelling um, at the point of the internal carotid artery. And that's where we'd find our carotid sinus, which contains um, some important baroreceptors that monitor pressure uh, within the vasculature. And this is obviously a site which we can use clinically uh, by applying uh, firm pressure over the area of the carotid sinus to stimulate those baroreceptors, um, which helps to increase parasympathetic drive to the heart and terminate, hopefully, any potential supraventricular tachycardias. So let's just follow the internal carotid artery um, up into the skull and see what it does when it's in there. So if I remove the brain, and what we see on the inside here is um, a number of blood vessels that will ultimately give rise to um, the arteries supplying the brain. If I turn it this way, so this is the front of the skull, just to orientate you, it's the front of the skull and this is the back of the skull. And hopefully what you can see is just here, we have the internal carotid artery as it's arisen through the carotid canal. So there is the internal carotid artery coming through, running towards the sphenoid bone or the body of the sphena, which is just here, and it would actually run into a dural venous sinus that sits either side of the cella tersica, known as the cavernous sinus. So this internal carotid artery runs through the petrous bone, which is this bit at the base of the, of the skull, emerges from the carotid canal, runs into the cavernous sinus, and as it emerges through the top of the cavernous sinus, this is when it gives um, its, its, its branches. The important one to take note of at the moment is the ophthalmic artery, which you probably can't see particularly well, but it essentially arises just after the common carotid artery has emerged to the top of the cavernous sinus and it gives a branch, you can probably just see it there, that runs through the optic canal um, and will give further branches that supply structures of the eye, um, importantly giving the central retinal artery, which supplies blood to the, to the retina, the sight sensing part of the eye.
the other branches of the internal carotid artery you will pick up in the nervous system unit in semester four but I thought it was just worth showing you at this stage that um, when the internal carotid artery emerges from the top of the cavernous sinus in addition to giving off that ophthalmic artery it gives off an anterior cerebral artery and a middle cerebral artery here Okay, so an anterior cerebral artery and a middle cerebral artery. And you don't have to worry yourself too much with those at the moment, but essentially what these other branches of the internal carotid artery will do, and you can probably see it here, is they, they, they form an arterial circuit known as the circle of Willis. So this circle here that's sitting right at the base of the skull is known as the circle of Willis. And you can hopefully appreciate that we've got some blood vessels that are actually coming up through the foramen magnum. So again, this is the back of the skull, this is the front of the skull, and here we can see just cut through the top of the spinal cord. Um, and we've got a couple of arteries that are running up through the foramen magnum. These are our vertebral arteries that have run up through the transverse foramen of the um, cervical vertebrae. And the two vertebral arteries join to form what's known as the basilar artery here, it's just running along the sloping part of the occipital bone which is known as the clivus. Clivus just means slope. So here two vertebral arteries form the basilar artery and you can see how this basilar artery is giving branches that essentially join with the branches of the internal carotid artery and that forms our circle of Willis. So it's the branches of the circle of Willis that actually supply arterial blood to the brain tissue itself and it's the internal carotid artery that comes up through the base of the skull, through that petrous bone and that common um, uh, carotid canal, running into what would be the cavernous sinus, so a dural fold would sit around here. We wouldn't see it ordinarily like this if we were looking at a, um, a cadaveric specimen. And then as it emerges, it gives rise to that ophthalmic artery and other branches that will join the circle of Willis and supply blood to the to the brain itself. Okay, so that's the internal carotid artery and its route intracranially. We'll pick up the ophthalmic artery and what it does in terms of supplying structures within the orbit a little later on in the unit. Um, but it's just to help join the dots that there are other branches, important branches of the internal carotid that are involved in, in supplying the brain structures, the brain tissue itself, uh, but we, we needn't concern them in any, uh, consider them in any further detail um, at this stage.